Inside the lines, ESPN, the magazine report. Hearing today on Mike and Mike, Goodell said he has not read the report, but is not aware of any connection between the two investigations. It will be Sister Act 27, Venus versus Serena. Again, the Williams sisters meeting tonight in the quarterfinals of the U.S. Open, 7 Eastern time on ESPN. ESPN tennis analyst Pam Triver told Mike and Mike today there's no doubt in her mind who's the greatest player of all time. From winning the U.S. Open here at 17 in 1999, to her dominant year in 2015 with a chance to win the calendar year Grand Slam when she won the Australian Open when she passed Martina and Chrissy. I put her ahead of Groff and ahead of everybody else. This afternoon's quarterfinals now live on ESPN. Roberta Vinci leads Christina Milenovic 6-3, one love. Four-time All-Star pitcher Joaquin Andujar has died at the age of 62 following a bout with diabetes. Hilton.com gives you unbeatable prices on hotels across the U.S. So when your team travels, you can too. Scream your heart out and then sleep your face off. Unbeatable prices on 12 unbeatable hotel brands. Only on Hilton.com. For the Saturday Morning Express. Catch it every Saturday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. On ESPN. The conversation has been growing about Wings Etc. See, Wings Etc. has those award-winning jumbo wings. They're popular for both dine-in and carry-out. Now the word is getting out about Wings Etc.'s appetizer lineup. From the ultimate nachos to the deep-fried pickle spears, frankly, they're irresistible. Friends are sharing time together at Wings Etc. They've got dining rooms filled with HD TVs tuned to the best sports programming, including NFL Sunday tickets. The people at the next table are talking about Wings Etc.'s daily half-pound lunch special, starting at just $6.49. Plus, Wings Etc. has food and drink specials throughout the week, including 59-cent wings every Monday. Plus, there's the kids' menu, and Wings Etc. is family-friendly with video games in the dining room. And the whole community is excited about how Wings Etc. is locally owned and operated, and they're proud to support local athletes, their families, schools, and teams. I guess Wings Etc. is a really big deal around here. Maybe it's hot out today, or maybe it's cold, but this weather's got you thinking about heading to the bar for an ice-cold Coors Light. Maybe it's a bar built into the steep cliff face of the Rocky Mountains with a waterfall that pours down on a multitude of Coors Lights, chilling them with the frigid power of a Rocky Mountain stream. You order one, and it suddenly appears in your hand. It's so cold, you feel like a giant eagle riding on cool winds, content with your foray into Rocky Mountain country. You forgot about the weather already, didn't you? Thanks, Coors Light. <sighs> Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Great beer, great responsibility. The Ford Free Ride Sales Event is here for Labor Day. You're free from interest on every 2015 Ford with 0% financing for 72 months for qualified buyers. Plus 1,000 Labor Day bonus cash on cars and SUVs. Not all buyers qualify for Ford credit financing. 72 months at $13.89 per month for 1,000 finance regardless of down payment. Excludes F650, 750 bonus cash on 2015 cars and SUVs requires Ford credit financing. Not available on 2015 Transit Transit Connect E-Series, Super Duty F-150 Raptor, Mustang Specialty Models. Take new retail delivery from dealer stock by 9815. See dealer for qualifications and complete details. And now, your ESPN Radio Network local local weather forecast. National Weather Service calling for one last hot day with sunshine in 91 today. Tonight, a slight chance of rain down to 71. Tomorrow, showers and storms likely on and off throughout the day. Clouds otherwise with a high of 82. Slight chance of lingering rain Thursday and Friday each day, a high of 82. Saturday, morning showers, 76. You're up to date with the latest weather forecast breaking on the ESPN radio network. This is your local home for Mike and Mike, the sports huddle, and all your favorite team. Get it all right. It makes my day go great. On the Seymour ESPN Sports Network. And now, at last. Time now for the Cofell Distributing Red Hawks Coaches Show on the Zemo ESPN Radio Sports Network. I have more to tell you. The Southeast Coaches Show airs every Tuesday at noon on ESPN 92.9 FM at 1220 AM. Live from Wings, etc. in Cape and Jackson. This is your chance to delve deep into the Red Hawks football season with head coach Tom Matukowicz. Let's go live to Wings, etc. Let's go! Right here on the Cofell Distributing Coaches Show on CMO ESPN. And we welcome you live to Wings, etc. The Cofell Distributing Red Hawks Coaches Show with Coach Took. I'm Eric Sean. We have a terrific crowd on hand, and we want to remind you, Wings, etc., your home uh, for really anything that has to do with sports with all of their HD televisions. 
They are the home for the Red Hawks, uh, 49 cent wings. We'll tell you more about the specials going on here at Wings, etc. But we want to welcome in the uh, Red Hawks head coach, Tom Atukowicz, the second straight week, second straight nice turnout here. Yeah, really, it's smelling good. I can't wait. Hopefully, uh, Lynn is here, so I think she's going to surprise me with a little lunch. Now, last time uh, she came over during one of the breaks just to verify your order. You, you think she'll just order for you this time around? Yeah, she's real the real head coach. I think she blows the whistles at home, so she she probably get me straightened out here. And we've got uh, John Slania, senior defensive lineman, uh, will join us. I think if you looked at what was the biggest and most impressive strength of your football team uh, against the University of Missouri on Saturday, it was a way that your defensive line uh, really showed that they are big, strong, tough, and deep. You kept rotating three in, three out. You play three man front. Uh, you hold the University of Missouri to 98 rushing yards, and it's not like they weren't trying to run the ball. 33 carries. Your defense made eight tackles for losses, three sacks, two interceptions. One got overturned by replay. Your defense got after him on Saturday. Yeah, and, and that's why we brought John in. I think uh, when you look at our D-line, they're, they're veterans. They're everything we want to be. They're physical. They play hard. You know, the only problem with John is, is – I mean, he walked in the office day, thought he was a million dollars. Because you know he's a big Cubs fan. As am I, John. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, they had a good game last night. I know the Cardinals uh, slipped a little bit. But he come walking in today like we won the game. Uh, it was really a felonious beating all about the head and face that the Cubs gave the Cardinals uh, yesterday at Bush Stadium. So we'll, we can talk a little Cubs baseball here with, uh, with John who uh, I know is uh, from South Elgin. What's that, about an hour out of Chicago? Yep. Yeah, about an hour out of Chicago, so we'll talk. Uh, His summer job is umpiring, too, so he, he is into it. He's an umpire. Yep. That's a thankless job. We'll have to talk umpiring when he gets up here. All right, uh, your team uh, falling at Mizzou 34-3. to What were your first impressions uh, upon the final gun in the football game Saturday? Well, I always look at the good and the bad and, and uh, kind of write it down and identify it and start with the bad. Um, you know, I was embarrassed by the penalties, had over 100-yard penalties. Um, you know, we had a mishap on a quick punt that ended up really kind of ending our chances of being in that game. Um, third down on offense, uh, you know, we weren't successful because we were in third and long and so those those are the three things that we got to really work on i think uh, when i look at all the positive there was a lot i think what you said with our defense um one thing that you don't really think of that our defense had six three and outs and when you can come out and three and out on offense uh, in the sec you know that, that means a lot we had a turnover and our, our uh, we call a sudden change and then our defense came out and made a punt right after that um you know emotionally that's hard to do on defense your offense just gives the ball over, and you run out there. Sometimes you're down, and really they they rose up and did a great job. And um, I was, I thought our running backs and our O line really blocked well in the run game. I mean, we had a hundred, I think about 150 yards rushing, right? And that's and that was hard. You know, the Michael Jackson had some of the best three yard runs I've ever seen in America because they should have been about an eight yard loss. Um, but as a team, the thing I'm proud of is we came out of that game healthy. We had a plan. We played a lot of guys. We've been working since January. We're even on the turnover margin, okay? And then we, you, when you looked at that, and I'll ask you, when you watched us play against Missouri, did we get out physical? You won a lot more than you lost at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. I mean, let, let's just let's just face it. You don't hold an SEC team to two point nine yards per rush, and they rush the ball yeah. over thirty times. If you're not winning the line of scrimmage. Eight tackles for losses. That's saying you're winning some battles. Yep. And I think we, you know, when you watch that film, we were the, uh, we we were really physical, and that'll that'll really pay dividends down the road. And so I come around that game, you know, excited. I think, uh, you know, in the paper, I just want to make sure somehow I got kind of messed up, but I was quoted as, you know, I, I was holding the offense back, waiting for SIU and. You know, someone must have punched me in the head before I got a microphone in because that was not the case. We don't hold anything back. That game had no bearing on SIU. Um, you know, people were concerned that we didn't get the ball to, to Paul Moore, no, none more than the coaches. I mean, we're, we're going to try to do that. And when you call a pass play, you don't call, hey, Paul McRoberts 
on an out route. You call a concept based on what you see, you deliver the ball and we just got to try and uh, get him the ball more, but that, that also is dictated a little bit by the defense. Um, and, and we're going to, you know, we're going to be a little bit of work in progress on offense. Uh, you don't just come out of the gate, start doing a bunch of things, and then you have a lot of bad things happen to you. And we got a plan with uh, with Tate a guy Bender. who Tate Bender has never yeah. taken a Division One snap. And one thing people don't understand is we got two new offensive tackles, and it's third and fifteen. The last thing I'm going to do is is put them in a, a situation where they can't be successful. I mean, yeah. those guys are going to play on Sunday. And then not only that, they come around the horn and hit pay in the side, and now we may not have a quarterback for the game. So, you know, um, we're, we're going to be better on offense, but when you watch the game and you get done with the game, our kids and our coaches feel really good about who we are and, and really focused on what it is we need to do better come this Saturday. We are at Wings, et cetera, in Cape Girardeau. Uh, just a heads up, we'll be at the Jackson location for Wings, et cetera, next Tuesday. So your first chance uh, to uh, watch the coaches show from Jackson. But, of course, they have their award-winning jumbo wings here at Wings, et cetera, popular for dine-in and carry-out. And they have a lot more on the menu than just their wings. They have their fresh-made burgers, wraps, sub-sandwiches, quesadillas, entree salads, smoked ribs, and much more, and their famous appetizer lineup that includes their ultimate nachos, their spicy deep-fried pickle spears here at Wings, etc. And you cannot look around this dining room without seeing all the high-def televisions. They have the best sports programming, including the NFL ticket. NFL kicks off Thursday night. Tom Brady versus Ben Roethlisberger. The Rams host the defending NFC champion Seattle Seahawks. Come Sunday, the game will be on right here at Wings, etc. Six o'clock kickoff versus SIU, and we'll talk more about SIU. But uh, the one thing that jumped out to me with the Salukis, 12 freshmen on their two-deep uh, depth chart. Your first or second string, either true or a lot of redshirt freshmen. This is a young football team. This is a rebuilding football team with a really high-level quarterback. Yeah. I, mean, when you, I think it all starts in every team. Uh, starts with the quarterback, and he had a phenomenal game. He's the number one leader in all of football and uh, the national player of the week, and, and our defense has our work cut out for us. And, you know, we, we hope we can just make them punt. I mean, they're, the, the, what they did to Indiana uh, was was just a great plan, well executed, and Mark Iannotti is the, the field general and, and did a great job with that. Uh, last year, he tied a school record through six touchdown passes against the Red Hawks. Last week, he was named co-offensive national player of the week. He accounted for 517 yards of offense. He threw for 411 and four touchdowns. He ran for 106 and a touchdown. And the way this game turns out, they lose 48-47. Uh, they had missed an extra point earlier in the game. They had a penalty, a five-yard penalty. Uh, late substitution, so they had to move their PAT unit back five yards, and they missed that PAT. So at the end of the game, Dale Lennon, who's in his eighth season, a uh, guy that won a national championship at North Dakota, he decided, hey, we're at uh, a Big Ten school. We're going for two to win the game here, and the pass bounced off a receiver's hands right at the goal line. No indication that he for sure would have gotten in, mm -hmm. but a ball that hits their receiver in the hand, that's how close they came to beating a Big Ten team. Yeah, they, they were right there. They also had a field goal block, the short yard uh, field goal block. So um, they, they had some opportunities there, and, and their coaches got challenged of getting their team back ready to go because I'm sure they felt like they left one there. When you watch Indiana play, I mean, it made my eyes bleed. There wasn't any defense there. Yeah. I mean, they, they let a 260-pound tight end run for 70-yard pass. I mean, like against the Big Ten, that's embarrassing. Well, uh, how, how many yards did they have in that game? Over 1,100, um, over 1,200 yards in this game. Uh, SIU racked up 659, Indiana 595. It, it's not very often you see a, a, a football game that has 1,200 yards of offense. No, it was. Uh, it, it reminded me of some of those games we had in the MAC conference when I was in that conference, just a lot of offense. And, um, you know, those guys – They've changed offensively. Uh, Nick Hill is now uh, the offensive coordinator. Who he was a quarterback from, uh, for us when we were there on staff, and uh, they went to more of a, a 
you know, a hurry up spread, you know, slinging around a little bit type of uh, style. And, uh, you know, to come out of the gate, to, to be able to pull that off is impressive. Um, you know, a lot of people carried the football, and but it was all done by Mark. You know, without Mark Iannotti, their quarterback, they're not near as successful. Well, we'll see uh, him on Saturday. He led him in rushing, by the way, with 100 and six yards. Now, your leading rusher was your quarterback, uh, Tate Bender. How, how do you how do you break down his performance? It looked like any other person who's getting his first Division One snaps in front of sixty five thousand SEC school probably battled some butterflies early. Wouldn't be human if he didn't. Yeah, well, I think it's just like any first starter. There were some good things he did and some bad things he did. I think uh, you know getting that first one out of the way is the biggest thing, and then now you know, uh, you feel much more comfortable and uh, just look for uh, big gains there. Maybe not see it on the, on the film, but just how you, how you handle things. Um, you know, being on the big stage that he was, you know, won't get any bigger than that this year. You outrushed Missouri in the game, 145 to 98. Uh, to Michael Jackson uh, ends up with 57 rushing yards. Uh, at one point, went down. He tried to get off the field, was an, uh, unable to do it. It looked like a leg. And then the very next series, he was back in there. That had to be a, a, a sigh of relief for everybody. Yeah, it was. You know, I think um, that's one thing I'm going to really challenge our wideouts is they got to do a better job blocking in the perimeter, especially on that play, a corner come off and, and end up cut tackling him. And, you know, I'll, I'll be lying to you if my heart didn't skip a beat there seeing him lay there but um you know he's a tough kid uh you know basically it just ended up being a, like a knee bruise and he was able to work through it and he's been in rehabbing all all week and should be just fine for saturday tremaine mccullough makes his debut uh, and we know that this is a running back that has a gear that a lot of other guys don't have he's got that breakaway ability uh he ends up with 18 yards rushing but you utilize him in the passing game caught a couple of passes out of the backfield had a 37 yard kickoff return uh, how about trey mccullough uh you know he, he did a great job we want to try and clean up some of uh some of those catches uh and really try to get him in a position to touch a football and because he could just do a lot of good things with it i think he's that spark we need on on kor and uh offensively you know it could all be covered and he can reverse the field and get get around the perimeter in a hurry and and like you said he's that change up to DeMichael where he's a big, big play waiting to happen. The leading returning tackler in the Southeastern Conference, Kentrell Brothers, the linebacker for the University of Missouri, he had 16 tackles. I mean, he, he looks like he, he might be in store for an All-American season. That is a good football player you played against Saturday. Yeah, I mean, as good as it gets. I mean, he's going to be a Sunday type of player and, um, you know, just a dominating performance by him. That's the type of defense you were going up against, though. I mean, you look – Back yeah. over the last five years, how many defensive players Missouri has sent to the National Football League? Yeah, they're they're just their recruiting model, how they develop their players. You know, they take a lot of athletes that, that are thin, build them up, and and you're like, how does that guy end up at Missouri? And it was because they developed them. That's that hashtag Mizzou made yeah. that they're so proud of. Uh, when you look at their quarterback, Matty Mock, you intercepted him once. Uh, it looked like you had him intercepted twice, but it got reversed by replay, but still a, a really good play by Jamar Holloway, who had the interception yeah. taken away from him. But uh, one of your team captains, Eric Moore, comes up with a big interception of Matty Mock. He, he's a guy that just is a, around the football all the time. He's got great instincts, and uh, Coach Burrow, his position coach, does a great job of – they, you know, they have a kind of a motto of ball hawks. And, um, you know, when that ball is in the air, he can literally turn into receiver. He's got just as good as ball skills as any of the receivers. Still got to work on the spelling of the name Eric. Uh, it's it's E-R-I-Q. Yeah. We know the correct way is E-R-I-K. But, uh, yeah. you know, he did have a big game for you. But uh, a, a guy voted team captain. You don't hand out team captains. No. That's, that's voted on uh, by teammates. Yeah, that's the highest honor you can receive. It's one thing to, you know, have your coach's opinion be good, but when you have your teammates' opinion, say, hey, I want you to lead us, um, that's just a great honor. And so, uh, one, that he's worked really hard. Uh, he, he buys into the team concept. He's always talking to younger players. He's ge generally just a really good kid. I've already offered him a, a coaching job, and so if he ever wants to get into coaching, he's got one with me. All right. 
when you talk about team captains and voting, does it rarely surprise you? You pretty much can tell who the captains are going to be, or once in a while, does, does a vote surprise you? If you have a good football team, it won't surprise you. You know, they know what a good leader looks like, and you have a pretty good idea. You know, if you if you have a team that doesn't know what a good football team looks like, they may vote for the most popular guy or, or whatever. But, um, you know, since I've been here, they've been about right on with the coaches. And John Slaney was voted a team captain yep. last year, right? Yep, and I changed our captaincy. We had eight last year, and we went to four, and John would have made it this year if we had eight again. It just – I wanted to have a little less voices going on and, and, and really kind of have less people talking this year. Word Wings, etc. It is the Red Hawks Coaches Show presented by Colfeld Distributing. And at Wings, etc., they have the comfortable laid-back atmosphere. They have great food, terrific service. They've got their daily half-pound lunch specials starting at 649. They've got food and drink specials throughout the week, including 59-cent wings, Every Monday, their kids' menu, they have family-friendly friendly video games in the dining room, and they are open seven days a week, late on the weekends, when the games go late. Uh, the punting from your guy, Alex Knight, on Saturday, uh, he set career highs, 10 punts. He averaged 50 yards per punt, 49.7. He had uh, six punts of over 50 yards a, it, an unbelievable performance by alex knight yeah and, and that's our program you know he had a good year last year but we challenge each and every one of our guys to really get better and uh you know he he's still work in progress but he has got a dynamite leg and if we can just get him consistent with his his approach and his his drop and leg swing i mean this this guy's not normal i think he dropped five or six inside yeah. the twenty yard line, and several of those, half of those, were inside the ten. He's yeah. really got a knack. It's one thing for a guy maybe to be punting and, and booted out of the end zone, and the average looks good. He's corner coughing, coughing in balls. Yeah, there. we talk about that a lot. You know, we're in a what we call a backed up situation where, where our offense is backed up. They didn't get the first down, and and so one of our program goals is never give the ball to the opponent's offense inside our own fifty. And so he came out and he booted a couple of them, and that never happened, even though we were we were backed up on offense. And so, you know, our specialist is as good as anybody in the country. And when you look at uh, what wins and loses uh, football games, especially close ones, is field position. And so we, we should be able to not only win field position, but, but dominate it. John Slania, senior defensive lineman, is going to join us after the commercial break. But uh, your thoughts uh, of – the developing relationship you've had since you have come here to be the head coach. And uh, we need a good John Slania story. Oh, well, one thing about John is there's plenty of good stories. I don't know if I could tell him, you know, we got some mixed company yeah. in here, but uh, John is an enthusiastic individual. So sometimes we've had a couple of arguments out on the field and uh, we thought there's a penalty this spring and it didn't end up being a penalty. So you might ask him how I handled that. Yeah. Okay, the, the penalty story, uh, we know that uh, he does some umpiring, and uh, good for him. He's a Cubs fan right down here in Cardinal Country. We'll talk it over with John Slania when we come back. It's Wings Etc., the Red Hawks Coaches Show, presented by Cofeld Distributing on the SEMO ESPN Sports Radio Network. Wings Etc. See, Wings Etc. has those award-winning jumbo wings. They're popular for both dine-in and carry-out. Now the word is getting out about Wings Etc.'s appetizer lineup. From the ultimate nachos to the deep-fried pickle spears, frankly, they're irresistible. Friends are sharing time together at Wings Etc. They've got dining rooms filled with HDTVs tuned to the best sports programming, including NFL Sunday Ticket. The people at the next table are talking about Wings Etc.'s daily half-pound lunch bag.
is the Red Hawks Coaches Show from Wings, etc. in Cape Girardeau. We're right in front of West Park Mall. The Wings, etc. parking lot backs right to the Steak and Shake parking lot. So if you're familiar with Steak and Shake, we are right there. Wings, etc. home of the Coaches Show. Now uh, we will be at the Jackson location uh, next week. So we want to make you understand that uh, we'll be in Jackson, and it's a little bigger and different setup in Jackson. We'll be there next Tuesday at 12 noon, and we want to invite you to enjoy their full menu, much more than just wings. They have their fresh-made burgers, their wraps, their sub-sandwiches, quesadillas, entree salads, smoked ribs, and more. John Slaney, a senior defensive lineman for the Red Hawks, joining us. I run through that litany list of what is on their menu, what's going through your mind, and did you get uh, any lunch before they, uh, they made you come up here and talk to me? Uh, definitely. I got a couple. Uh, we got a burger and some curly fries today, so it was very good. All right. Uh, have you eaten at uh, Wings before? Yeah, I come here all the time. All uh, right. I love getting the wings here, and the burgers are to die for. So they know your first name basis. You got a tab running here. Oh, then. definitely, yes. All right. Now, you are from South Elgin, Illinois. Now, explain just exactly where that is. How close are you to Chicago? What was it like growing up there? Uh, northwest suburbs, about an hour out, depending on traffic. And... Uh, I mean, I love it up there, but down here it's it's kind of similar. Just the biggest difference is the Cardinal Nation compared to Cubs Nation up there. That's the biggest difference down here. See, that's the thing. What separates is it is it your locale? What separates you from being a Cub fan or a Sox fan when you're up in the Chicago area? Everyone loves the Cubs up there. The Sox, on the other hand, I'm, I can't stand the Sox. And all my Sox friends, they're just I don't understand why they like that team, but. It's more north side, south side. South side guys like the Sox. North side guys more go for the Cubs. So, Well, this is uh, one of their great years. They haven't made the playoffs since they won the division title in 2008. They won it in 2007. They got swept out of the playoffs both years. Yep. Uh, so hopefully this is a year that they're going to make it. How much abuse do you take? And being your size and strength, you probably don't take as much abuse uh -huh. as – as some other people, but uh, how much abuse do you take for being a Cub fan right here in the teeth of Cardinal Nation? It's been a tough three years, I'll tell you that. I've been up to Bush about five or six times, and they're 0-6 since I've been up there. And I got my Rizzo jersey on every time, and they just get whooped. And it's tough, but this year I'm smiling. I'm hoping, it's, I'm hoping we can do something. And one <laughs> thing is key. There are only two games behind the Pirates. They yes, can finish in front of Pittsburgh, then they get that playoff game at Wrigley Field against Pittsburgh. Yeah, I know the Cardinals people are shaking in the boots right now thinking we might have to go to Wrigley Field this postseason. All right, uh, Coach Tuke uh, said uh, there was an incident, apparently a, a pretty well-known incident, uh, about a penalty or a so-called penalty during camp. Uh, bring us up to date. Well, we're doing our fall scrimmage, and uh, me and Coach Tuke are both very competitive guys. I'd say I'm one of the most competitive guys on the team, and that, it was a clear – intentional grounding so I put my hands up like the ref I'm like that's an intentional grounding and coach Tuke wasn't happy about that just told me in meetings the day before like don't say anything just be quiet and do your job and I said something and there comes coach Duke yelling at me I had to go run the stairs for the next 30 minutes so that was no fun so stair running still the the best tool that a coach has right yes sir all right uh, so we saw an intentional grounding uh, in the game, uh, Matty Mock uh, mm -hmm. intentionally grounded a football. That has a lot to do with putting pressure on an opposing quarterback, which you yes, guys sir. did a lot on Saturday. Yes, sir. We uh, we did really good on first and second down to get him the third and long, and we bring in a nickel package. We've got some of our faster guys and best pass rushers out there, and they did a great job getting after the quarterback. I mean, their offensive line really didn't have an answer for most of those guys up front. And that's a good offensive line. Yes, I mean, you're, you're talking about a guy, guys with a lot of starts – the, the, just looking at the sheer numbers uh, of your defensive line, now you've got a front three, so keep in mind we're not talking about four players, three players. You have 33 career games, 21 starts. Josh Wilson, who was a freshman last year, uh, 12 games, three starts. Travis Sanders, 31 career games. That's just the starters. Then you go to Popovich, Hampton, and Black, and you're talking about 60-plus more games played at the division level. Is there any question this is the strength of this football team? Well, the thing is we just don't get intimidated by anyone. We've been out there against SEC teams, and we've been out there against NFL offensive linemen, and we know how to play. We know what to do on Saturdays, and that's what gives us the advantage against 
maybe more talented guys, but they just don't have the experience that we have. All right. Uh, eight tackles behind the line of scrimmage, uh, three sacks, uh, multiple quarterback hurries and interception. Uh, what was the what was the feeling during the game? Because clearly you were winning the lot of line of scrimmage a lot. I mean, we just every single day in practice, Coach Kuhn pushes us really hard, so we're ready for Saturdays. And when we come to games, it seems easier than what practice is. And we're out there, and every one of us are competitors. I mean, our two deep, our twos are just as good as our ones. So when they're out there, they're playing hard and competing against SEC guys, and it's just like it's another day. How much does it help? later in the football game when they rotate the defensive lineman and it gets you a chance. Everybody wants to be on the field. Everybody yep. wants to play. But realistically, to be able to go too deep and to not have a big drop-off, how much is that an advantage for you in the second half or in the fourth quarter of a football game? It helped us immensely because, I mean, at Mizzou on Saturday, it was so hot. It was probably the hottest game I've been a part of in college. And Having that two deep coming through, we were fresh. I mean, you could take out our ones and you bring in twos that are all ready to go and they're flying around and the offense is still tired. They don't rotate. Offensive lines don't rotate. So it's a huge advantage to not have a drop off from the ones and twos. In football, things get chippy a lot. I thought it got a little chippy uh, with Mizzou there. What, the, what kind of chatter goes on down in the trenches in a game like that? I mean, it's changed a lot. I feel in high school there's a lot more chatty, but now in college they're moving so fast you're just trying to catch your breath. I mean, I feel like there's more chatting on the outside because in the inside every single play you're just – it's contact. So you're not really talking. You're just using your force to let it talk for you. All right. Uh, what was your favorite part of the game uh, on Saturday? Ah, that's tough. I mean, I made a – tackle on punt that was pretty impressive I was in open field and guy tried juking me and I brought back my old linebacker days with old Brian Erlacher and got him in the open field so I was pretty excited about that so you grew up a Bears fan oh yeah definitely yeah so uh, the Super Bowl shuffle was a little before your time yeah. I, I remember that team uh, with uh, with Walter Payton and Jim McMahon and uh, the whole Super Bowl shuffle thing yes, all right you have not played a conference game yet you personally have never beaten SIU yes sir how big is this game? And also considering that uh, Coach Took was at SIU for seven years, Coach Sia was there, I believe, for four years, Coach Poteet was a all-conference quarterback at SIU. How much more incentive is there to win this game? It's very big. I mean, SIU recruited me coming out of high school. Uh, my cousin plays for SIU. I see him every summer. We work out at the same place, and he's always got that smirk on his face, and I'm just – waiting for the year that I can go back and just tell them, yeah, we whooped you this year. But it's a, it's a team that it's got out quick on us the last three years. I mean, we just haven't been able to come back. I mean, we have to start fast against this team. Uh, we've already watched film on them. Their offense is very good. We just have to play like we did against Missouri and just cut down on our, the big plays, and we'll be all right. All right. When you look at the offensive line that you're going to be going against, uh, their left tackle – has played in one game. He got his first start uh, last week. Their left guard, his first career start, only three Division One games. Uh, their right tackle, very experienced. Right guard and center have a little bit more experience. But the left side of their offensive line, uh, not very experienced. Yeah, I mean, that definitely feeds into our experience. I mean, we've been out there. We know how to beat an offensive lineman at the college level. I mean, these guys have played one game. They played well, but the advantage that we have just experience-wise is going to, I think, help us, especially in, when we're moving and we're twisting and stuff like that. The communication, we're just more advanced than they are. All right, you faced a pretty mobile quarterback in Matty Mock, but he's not a guy that likes to get out and do a lot of running. He'll just get mobile in the pocket. Iannotti's different. Yes, he ran for 100 yards. He, mm -hmm. he threw for 400 yards. This on paper, this is going to be one of the better quarterbacks you see this year. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he looked very good in the Indiana game. I mean, we just need to work on making sure we wrap him up because he can break some tackles and treat him like he's a running back, not as much as a quarterback. All right, what's the key to getting pressure on the quarterback? Because even Tom Brady uh, has trouble against pressure. I mean, it's more about just be beating the guy in front of you. If you're twisting, make sure that you're twisting in the right place and making sure you're in the right place in case the guy flushes out, you're there for a sack. It's more opportunistic than anything. What's your best Coach Took story? Coach Tuke's story. Oh, I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm going to go back to the 
fall camp when me and him were getting after a little bit. We had uh, fall camp. Uh, spring ball was a little edgy a little bit. It was my last spring ball, so I was trying to get a little edgy. But fall camp, I was pretty good. I was being a pretty good kid. And uh, one practice, I was just, I don't know, there was something wrong with me. And Coach, I had gotten a couple of scuffles with the offensive linemen and then the Michael Jackson and then – a tight end and coach too could just put it to me i mean he didn't talk to me like three or four days and he probably had a right to do so but i don't know i was just being competitive and he was being competitive he always loves the offense so that's that's just the one thing that me and him hit heads against all the time who's the who is the strongest player on the team just oh, physical strength joshua wilson there's no one stronger than joshua wilson he uh sophomore yes yeah, sophomore he uh I remember the first day when he got here, he he died during uh, runs and all that. But then he finally got his helmet on and put on pads. And Marlon, our 330-pound nose tackle, was giving him, some, giving him some grief. And he said, all right, let's do board drill, one-on-one, -on -one, push him back. And he locked out Marlon, moved him back about five yards and planted him to the ground. We're like, wow. And then ever since that, I mean, in workouts, he squats 600, benches four-something. He's very strong. All right, how important is it for you to get some bragging right? He has a touchdown. He's a defensive lineman. He fell on a football in the yeah. Missouri Baptist game. He has a touchdown to his name. You need a touchdown before you get out of here, right? I, know. He, I had an interception in high school my senior year, so I'm still waiting for Coach Duke to let me drop on the coverage. And that when that day happens, I'll pick it off, and no one's tackling me once I get the ball. All right. Are you on Twitter? Yeah, I'm on Twitter. All right. Where, how do we follow you on Twitter? Uh, John Slania. Pretty easy. J-O-N-S-L-A-N-I-A. All right. Can't wait for Saturday in Definitely. the Salukis. Thanks so much for Thank the you. time. Thank you. Good luck the rest of the year. That's Thanks John you. Slania. We'll take the time out. The wings, et cetera. The home of the Red Hawks Coaches Show presented by Colfeld Distributing on the SEMO ESPN Sports Radio Network. About wings, et cetera. See, wings, et cetera, has those award-winning jumbo wings.
It is the Red Hawks Coaches Show, presented by Colfeld Distributing, distributors of Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer at Wings, etc. in Cape. We're at Wings. They have their dining rooms filled with high-def television after high-def television. They've always got the best sports programming. That includes the NFL ticket, their laid-back atmosphere, great food, great service, and don't forget about their lunch specials. They start at $6.99. Their food and drink specials throughout the week, including their famous 59 cent wings on Mondays. They have a full kids' menu, family friendly video games in the dining room, and they're open seven days a week, including late on the weekends when the games go late. It's wings, etc. We will be at the Jackson location next week for the coaches show. Coach Took rejoins us. Uh, John Slania did uh, did a great job. Yeah, he's a great kid and. Uh, you know he's a he's also a really good boyfriend, and so he's got he's got a great girlfriend, and uh, they're just neat to be around. That's the one great thing about being a, a coach is is you get older, but all the kids stay young, and it helps keep you young. I've heard that from a few coaches that being around young people keeps you young. Yeah, yeah that's true. It's a lot of fun. It is with me. I, I'm immature, I think. Anyway, I think my wife would tell you that, but uh, I enjoy young people. That's why I do what I do. That's kind of a sly Cheshire grin she gave there. She didn't acknowledge one way or the other. She just grinned at that. Yeah. Uh, your background at SIU, seven seasons, three conference championship, five playoff teams with Jerry Kill. You had a lot of success at SIU Carbondale. And, uh, you know, Dale Lennon is trying to get them back to where they want to be. This is eighth season for him. He has a national championship back in 01 at North Dakota. Uh, a little... I understand you want to win every game, but is there more motivation when you coach against one of your former teams? I wouldn't say former. I think just <clears throat> there's a lot of motivation because of the proximity. It's a big deal to our fan base. It's a big deal in recruiting. Most recruits from uh, St. Louis to Memphis will be in on together. And so this is a big game uh, that has to do with that. And just, just whether or not we've taken that next step, you know, uh, at the end of the day, we haven't beat them. Nobody on our team has ever beat them. And so, uh, you know, I, I die to give these seniors that taste and, and to say that they left this program beating them. So it is a big game, and, I, you know, we're going to do everything we physically can, and we need uh, people's help. We need people in the stand. This needs to be uh, – this, this is a big game. Uh, not a lot in the last couple of years been big in, in Hawk Stadium, but this is one of those we need to come – be loud. Our kids feed off that energy. And uh, we need Cape Girardeau and Jackson, Southeast Missouri to come out and help support these seniors. The numbers uh, say the Red Hawks lead the uh, all time series 35 or 39 wins, 35 losses, eight ties. Uh, it'll be the 83rd time they have played. The series dates back to 1909, one year after the last time the Cubs won the World Series, 1909. But the Salukis have won eight of the last nine. The last win was the OVC Championship year, 2010, over there, the late Henry Harris run, uh, and the Red Hawks uh, beat them. They were ranked fifth in the country that year. The last time that the Red Hawks beat them here at Hawk Stadium, 2001. It's been a long time, and I know Red Hawk fans would like to see that streak end. Well, if it's physically possible, we're going to do it. You know, they, you know, obviously they're a good football team. They took a BCS team to, to the last play of the game. And so uh, what an opportunity for our coaches and our kids to have a big stage like this. And uh, we want to play well Saturday. We need to practice well today. Uh, Bruce Saya uh, was a coach there as well. He coached the defensive line there for four years from 2004 to 2007 and Sherrod Proteet was the quarterback for the Saluka. Yeah. So you've got uh, you got a lot of ties with Carbondale here. Yeah, it, it, Bryce Sia. Is, or what I say? Bruce. Oh, I'm sorry. Bryce Sia. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, we were there together and that's when I first saw uh, Proteet play and and that was my first I just had a, a appreciation for how he played the game. And so um, I don't think it's because they've been there. I think just from a program standpoint uh, you know, this is a big game. All right. Uh, you look at their roster, and uh, football is a game of matchups. Obviously, you would love, uh, you know, to exploit a matchup with your top player, Paul McRoberts. 
Uh, they have one starting cornerback who's a redshirt freshman, saw his first Division One action last week. And their other starting cornerback is a sophomore who started the first five games last year, did not start any of the final seven, although he did play in 12. So a redshirt freshman on one side, a sophomore on the other side, and uh, the backup to the sophomore corner is a freshman himself. Their two strong safeties are both redshirt freshmen, first and second string. Not a lot of experience back there going up against a guy in Paul McRoberts who NFL scouts think have a chance to play on Sunday. Yeah, we got we got to do a great job of trying to get some uh, get Paul matched up there one on one. They played a lot of what we'd call three roll, where they rolled uh, corner up on Paul and then they played a guy over top of him. And Paul still had a good game last year, and uh, he's a he's um, something we try and get him the ball, and we need to uh, you know we need to throw the ball better than we did uh, last weekend. And so I think this is a great opportunity. Um, let's let's go out there and execute. Dale Lennon, uh, their head coach, in his press conference yesterday specifically mentioned McRoberts multiple times. Uh, so, obviously, they're going to be trying to game plan uh, for what Paul brings to the table. They know how good he is. Yeah, I don't think Paul's going to sneak up on anybody this year. And so, uh, you know, I think him and all the receivers, uh, you know, they do a good job in a passing game. But they also, you know, I'm really challenging this year to, to do a good job in the perimeter blocking because uh, you can make a lot of plays out there on the edge, uh, throwing the ball quick, then blocking and, and things like that down the field, and, and we want those guys to really buy into that. What makes Mark Iannotti so good? Why why is he the national offensive player of the week this week? Well, I'd say number one is he played against Indiana's defense, <laughs> who would make me throw up in a basket right in front of me. Number two is he's like a coach out there. He's literally making checks. If you line up wrong, he is going to change the play and, and get it right. Um, um, and, you know, just when you bring back a, a veteran quarterback, it just, you know, their second year is so much better than their first year. And, um, you know, Nick Hill, I know well, their their quarterback coach, and he's done a great job developing it. Well, you look back, uh, he played his first three years. I say played. He was at Eastern Michigan. He got to play in 12 games in three years, attempted one pass. So he was a forgotten guy, couldn't get on the field. All of a sudden, here he comes uh, to SIU. So a guy who who was playing at the FBS level but uh, saw that the playing time wasn't going to be there, uh, that's a familiar story. Guys want to play. Yeah, and, and good for him. He's a self-made man. It's a fifth-year senior that, you know, uh, couldn't find his way on the field at Eastern, came here and, uh, you know, battled last year. You know, they replaced him middle of the year last year and then brought him back and uh he's he's obviously a mature young man to be able to handle that kind of uh jockeying on the depth chart and not let it be personal and and um you know went to work on his game and it you know it, it proved itself saturday now indiana uh, has a history of scoring points uh they beat missouri last yeah. year uh, what did Indiana do to have so much success against the Salukis? Almost 600 yards of offense for Indiana. Big plays. Uh, they're you know the receivers got behind their DBs and and uh, you know some missed tackles and and they just had explosive plays. You know 70, 80 yard type of receptions. Um, and you know like you said, it's an offensive program. You know I think that the head coach is, does a great job with their offense and uh, they got good skilled players and. Um, you know, took advantage of them. All right. Uh, as far as your team goes, you said that you got out of Columbia fairly healthy. Are, yep. are, are you happy with how healthy you are? Are you surprised with how healthy you are? And, and how much could you maybe attribute some of that to all of the preemptive medicine and techniques and things that you did in the off season because you focus so much on avoiding injury as I knock on wood? Please don't knock on wood again. We just had this lesson with my daughter. You know, she's eight, and she's opening up fortune cookies, and she thinks this fortune cookie is going to actually have any value in her life whatsoever. It's got so the lottery I, numbers on the back I, nowadays. I smashed it and made sure she understands that it has no bearing in her life. But, you know, a lot of people talk about how lucky or how fortunate or, or whatever. You, you, you know, you say blessed with me, but don't say any of that other stuff. Um, because we we work really hard on it. We played a lot of guys intentionally. You know, John and the D line only had about thirty snaps apiece instead of sixty seventy. Well, that alone will will help you stay healthy. 
uh, from the knee braces to the training, uh, to our uh, training, uh, our, our uh, trainer, uh, Ben Fox and Amanda, they do a great job. And our kids have bought into the hydration and the stretching and the yoga and all that stuff kind of come through. And uh, so it, we're getting what our work's deserved and, and we're staying healthy. All right. Did you look around the league to see what happened? Uh, it was a good win for Jacksonville <coughs> State. They did win uh, a game over a ranked team in Chattanooga, uh, 23 to 20. So that's a, a really good win yeah. for the Ohio Valley Conference. Uh, and I think a, a lot of people were shocked at the final score in the Western Illinois, Eastern Illinois game. EIU came in ranked. They're not ranked now, but they were 25. Didn't score a touchdown. They lost at 11x, 33 to 5. So those are those are two games that jumped out to me. Yeah, I, I was on the conference call with all the the head coaches, and and I was the same way. Thought Eastern Illinois uh, was disappointed how they played. They had twelve uh, penalties and they had uh, five turnovers. I think I was a little surprised. Uh, Ole Miss, you know, they they seem like they got a little edge, and and man, they come out just firing on on UT Martin. Seventy six to three, Ole Miss beat UT Martin. Yeah, they must not have let off the gas, uh, you know. So um, Rick Weezer and I, I've got to satellite radio, so we were driving up uh, to Columbia because I had a football game on Friday night. So we were driving up uh, for the game, and we were listening to the Ole Miss broadcast on satellite radio. And, I mean, just from the opening play, it yeah. was just, you know. It, you know, some of those games you see and say, well, the final score is deceiving. Right. It was not deceiving. <laughs> it, it, was, was, it was. Yeah, it was a, it was a trip, trip to the woodshed. So we're still waiting to hear. I think uh, what we found out is Jacksonville State is, is is the team that everybody else is chasing. I think, uh, and I know coaches probably don't care about that. It's like a 34-point spread here. They're going to Auburn. Uh, boy, what a tough game uh, that's going to be. That's a that's a that's a the number six ranked team in the nation and an SEC team on top of that. Yeah, I mean it's just like us in Missouri. The, you know, you're in your home state. You get to play one of the best programs, so I'm sure it helps in recruiting. Um, but they're they're really really good. No different than Missouri. Um, so uh, we know how that feels. I know you talked about it uh, after the game. You were disappointed with Kendall Donerson. Uh, he was called for targeting penalty, helmet to helmet contact with Maddie Mock, who was ejected. Uh, the rule carries over to this next game, or at least the first half of the next game. Maybe you could tell us the rule. <clears throat> if it happens in the first half, uh, you know, he's uh, kicked out of the game and that's it. But that's if it, it happens okay. in the second half, then you have to set the next first half of the next game. Uh, you know, it was embarrassing. I ran the whole – 105 players ran because of the decision Kendall made. And so I think we won't have to worry about that anymore. And, you know, the one thing in watching the game, 10 penalties is not like your team. You were the second least penalized team in the Ohio Valley Conference last year. Yeah, we started off rough last year with some penalties, and, and we're an edge team. I'm an edge coach. Like, we're going to play on the edge because when you play that hard and you play that physical, that just happens. Yeah. And so we got to just work to get that down. But I'm not backing off. I mean, we're going to get it on Saturday. All right, Peter Lloyd, uh, first game really testing that leg. Uh, how do you think things went for Peter Lloyd? He did. You handed him the football once on an end around. I thought the end around, when you started going to the end around, that's what loosened your running game up. That's yep. what, I thought that, that loosened them exactly up just right. a little bit. We're trying to figure out how to run the game and, or get the ball running, and, and we're able to get some sweeps, get the ball on the edge, and that loosened it up up in the middle. Um, you know, I think uh, – he had a good game. I'm disappointed in some of the mental errors that he had, um, as is he. And I look for him to have a, a really good uh, game Saturday. All right. Uh, some guys that uh, when you went back and watched some video really impressed you. Boy, you know, you thought maybe they played well, but then when you watched the video, you were you, you were even more pleased. Well, we didn't mention Chad Meredith much, uh, but he, he, he was your leading tackler. Yeah, and yeah. he was a, a dominating guy, and, and that was great to see, you know, because he'd been out a long time, had a season-ending injury, and, man, that was a long road to recovery. And for him to come out and have a breakout game like that, I'm just, just really proud of him. I think uh, uh, Garrett Baker on the offensive line played really physical. If you just watched him, like he was striking people and, you know, uh, it, did, it certainly didn't look like an OVC player versus SEC player, so I was appreciative of, of how physical our O-line was. 
All right. Uh, as you look at what SIU brings in here on Saturday, uh, what's the game plan? How do you how do you beat the Salukis? We're going to do like we've done since we got here. We're going to put our stuff on, and we are going to get it on. And we're going to do everything we can to play our best. And if our best ain't good enough, then so be it. But we just want to make sure uh, we give them our best. Tailgating starts early. Uh, let people know you have uh, you have implemented uh, some new things prior to games, including the Red Hawk Walk, including uh, the Lock and Rocks. Talk a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, the, the Red Hawk Walk will be two hours before the game, so it'll be at 4 o'clock. And that, that's really a great start to where you can engage our, our roster and our team will walk through all the tailgates. and They love seeing people out there enjoying the game and then – uh, that lock and rock is just a real intimate time. It is the height of the energy and all this work we put in this week, and you can just feel it. And uh, you know, that's, that's we've got a new video to to come out into, and and Nate Saverino, Philip Lady do a great job of, of putting all that together. And so this is a this is a major team effort, and all of our athletic administration does a great job of. Being able to put an event like this, and I want to, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna take a, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna film, all right, and take pictures of everybody in the stands. And if I don't see your picture in there, next time I see you at Walmart, I'm gonna pimp you out about not being at the damn game. I like it. I think you just scared some people. Uh, and so that's good. Uh, sometimes fear can be a good motivator, right? One thing I'd like to say is, man, you're looking good. Not that I'm kind of into that kind of thing, but you've lost some weight. <laughs> A little, a little bit, bit. man. About, about thirty pounds. You're kind of in fighting rate. You're you're inspiring. Not man. yet, but close. All right, all right. Uh, and if you had to, if you had to say one thing to fans in this area who might be, boy, you know, I might have this to do on Saturday night versus, well, maybe I'm going to Hawk Stadium Saturday night. Well, you, you just get, you know, you get 11 opportunities. You, you can always golf. You can always go see a movie. You can always go on a, a date or whatever it's going on, but you can't always see two really good football teams coming together at 6 p.m. It's going to be a beautiful night. Uh, you know, it, it's a family weekend, so we got a lot of our uh, kids as parents coming in, and, and why not? This is a great start to the school year, and we need to get the school year off to a great bang with a big-time win this weekend. All right. Uh, it's a 6 o'clock kickoff. Don't worry about the Floyd Mayweather fight. He's fighting a, a, a soup can, uh, and he will win that fight easily, so I recommend the football game. Yeah, and why would you want to support that guy anyway? Exactly. Coach, yeah. thanks so much. We will see you at Houck Stadium. And on it's Harley Saturday. night. If It's Harley night also. Harley night. Does, yes. You, does, got a, you got a Harley? I do not, but uh, does that mean wear leather? No, just come in in a Harley and get that motor running because that's what our kids are going to do. I think Mark Allnut did that last year. Yeah, Didn't he bring yeah, his Harley? Absolutely. Jay Knutson. And, and uh, you know, it's, again, if football can engage so many people, this is really a community event. And, and so we'd love to have you come out. All right, 6 o'clock kickoff on Saturday. Coach, we'll see you over there. Thank you. All right, that's Coach Tom Matukowicz. That's going to do it. Don't forget, we'll be at the Jackson location, Wings, etc. Next week, stay tuned. It is the Rosillo and Canal uh, Show coming up next on ESPN Radio. For a final time here from Wings, etc., we say so long, everybody. We'll see you Saturday at Hawk Stadium.